Welcome back to hopefully day two of unit one common core. Now what we did last time if you remember we did a lot of long division that was fine but I want to move on to a couple different things. Now again these are all small pieces of a much larger puzzle. While I do admit that it is seems like review for a lot of this I do promise that this is building blocks towards something more. So let's begin. So in my video I said you know before about the three-fourths a fraction is really top divided by bottom. So 3 fourths just means 3 divided by 4. Again, while I know you enjoy fractions about as much as, you know, getting a hammer to the head, just remember that all it is is a division problem that was taken and turned top to bottom versus, you know, first then divided by something else. So 3 over 4 just means 3 divided by 4. So you just take top divided by bottom. And so yes, you could also say 3 divided by 4 is 0.75. And this type here. Now here you have 1 divided by 6. Now when you take your calculator, maybe you just know that 1 divided by 6 is 0 0.166666. Notice how 6 is going to go on forever. Since 6 is going to go on forever, we're simply going to use a thing called a bar notation. A bar notation just means it's a line that goes over the number. And it means I'm going on forever. So anytime you see a bar notation saying, okay, it just goes on forever. So when you see this, though, like 28 over 99, go ahead and use your calculator if you wish. 28 divided by 99, you're going to get 0 0.282828. Why, we'll get to later. But for right now, what you would have is since the repeater is a 2 and an 8, the bar notation goes above both the 2 and 8 as shown. Uh, by the way, you this is great. You could also, if you wanted, although I don't know why you desire, you could have 0.28 and then put the bar after that, but it seems kind of repetitious. In other words, as long as you have the line over the first 2 weight, you're going to say, okay, 2 weight, 2 weight, 2 weight. And because it repeats, it's going to go on forever and there will be no stopping. Okay. So you go ahead and try. Go ahead and uh, either use long division or a calc at this point. doesn't matter to me. And go ahead and round using a bar notation. Go ahead and pause it this time, and let me see how you did. Okay, let's take a look how you did. 2, 6 becomes 0 0.3 repeating. 2 over 120 becomes 0 0.016. Notice that only the 6 repeats because that's the only repeater. You don't have to put a line over the 0 and 1 because you don't see the 0 and 1 again. And 1 over 18 is just 0 0.05, and the 5 is the one that repeats. Now, we're going to do a skills practice in class tomorrow, but you get a preview of it today. Remember, if you do it at home and turn it into me at the beginning of class, you'll get extra credit points. That way, you get rewarded for doing this and watching the video. So go ahead at this time, do these, and let me see how you did. Okay, here is your 6. Let's see. I'm sorry, I'll give you a second again. Go ahead and try these 6. Okay, go ahead. Now let's see how you did. 11 over 18 becomes 0 0.6 and the 1 repeats. 5 over 30 is 0 0.1 with the 6 repeating. 10 over 90 becomes 0 0.1 repeating. 1 over 15 should be 0 0.06 repeating. 2 over 9 is 0 0.2 repeating. And 100 over 360 becomes 0 0.27 repeating. Hopefully it wasn't too difficult. You can also just round. Now rounding, I know you've done rounding since third, fourth grade. Most of you have it locked down. Some of you are like, eh, I kind of get it. Well, we'll do a quick tutorial to make sure that you're fully understanding. Remember when I said 1 6 was 0.16666? Well, let's round to the nearest tenths. Now, if you remember, the tenths is the first number, then hundredths, and so on. What you do is, if the tenths is what you're deciding is the number after, that decides whether it gets promoted or not. Now, why do I say promoted? Quick story. When I was in the Army, you, uh, when you got to a certain rank, after E4, if you wanted to get promoted into a sergeant, you had to go to what's called a promotion board. Now, it's real simple. You, what you do is all the things you've done up to that point, your physical fitness tests, your different schools, your other things that can be added together towards points. And if you had enough points, your company commander could send you to the promotion board. There, you would come in full uniform, your hair would be cut, you'd be looking as good as you could. You'd be answering a bunch of questions from a panel, whether it be like a first sergeant or a captain or a sergeant major. They'd all be asking you these questions to decide whether or not you deserve to be promoted. Based on all your other points and all your other recommendations and your performance at the board, all your points were tallied. If you 
scored high enough, you got another promotion. You got another, you know, chevron on your shirt or what have you. If you didn't, you didn't lose rank, but you started all the way over again. So in other words, let's say that you're an E4 a specialist and you or a corporal and you want to become a sergeant. What would happen is you go to the board, you do your performance, you lock up, you ask your questions, you answer your questions. If you got promoted, great, you're an E5 sergeant. But if you didn't, you have to go all the way back at the end of the line. You're still an E4, but you have to wait for every other person, basically, to get their shot. So you didn't want to mess it up. Here's no different. Tense, the one column. Now, what determines it is the one after. And all it has to be is a five or higher. A five or higher will promote. If it's not, it won't. Here for the hundreds, if you want to round to the nearest hundreds, it's the next number, the thousand that will determine it. The thousandth, it'll be the ten thousand that will determine it. And here we'll put them into practice for you. So if you notice here, after the one, if you want for the tenths, it's the next number. So is it a five or more? The answer is yes. So it promotes it to a point two. If I'm rounding to the nearest hundredth, now I'm not messing with the tenths. I'm dealing with the hundreds, but it's the thousands that's going to determine it. Is this five or more? The answer again is yes. So this six becomes a seven. Here I'm trying to round to the nearest thousand. Now I'm getting kind of confused, like how far are we going? Tens, hundreds, thousands. So that's what's going to be determined by the next number, which is the ten thousands. Okay, it's five or more. So this gets promoted from a six to a seven. Notice that the numbers changing is just getting more and more precise. The, the farther down you go in decimals, the more precise you get. Sometimes it makes a big difference. Sometimes it doesn't. Some of the math you do, you might be you know, making meat patties, and it doesn't really matter if you're off by a half ounce or so. However, you're dealing with scientific you know, things that may involve you know, very important or very uh, powerful items. A tenth of a pound or tenth of an ounce could cause a serious problem, so you want to be exact. Depends whether you have to be exact or close. Now you try, round to the nearest tenth. Hint, this is this one. Go ahead and pause. Let's see how you did. 2.4, hope you got it. Try again, round to the nearest thousand. Pause. Let's see how you did. Right here. Now, I, I tricked you probably. You think the nearest hundredth, but nope, tenth, hundred, thousandth. So you have to go to the ten thousand. Sorry to be tricky. Just had to see if you were paying attention. Round to the nearest ten thousandth. Go ahead. Let's see how you did. Tens, hundreds, thousands. Ten thousands. Notice that this is not enough to promote. It doesn't. You don't go down a number. It just cuts off, saying, "Okay, there's nothing here, and the rest is just zeros." So you just cut it off at that point. And finally, the nearest hundred thousand. Go ahead, and there you go. Why? Because the four is not strong enough, so it cuts off. Skills practice again. Turn these in to me for extra credit in the morning, because we're going to do them again. So why not get double your points? Let me actually let you read it this time before I zoom ahead. Round the nearest tenth, hundredth, and thousandth. So here are your three. Kind of hard to see them all. But take these three and put tens, hundred, thousandths. Go ahead and pause me. Let's see how you did. The answers are as follows. 12.3, round the nearest tenth, hundredth. Three, four, three, four, three. I'll just let you see the answers. I won't have to talk through them all. Go ahead and take a second look. Pause if you need and we're going to continue. Now a mixed fraction, again, rrr, fractions, no, no, it's going to be fine. Because we already know what to do. This is just a division problem, isn't it? So divide it. Take 4 divided by 5. I don't care whether you long division or calculate. That's your affair. Just take 4 divided by 5. So, okay. I'm going to take 4 divided by 5. Take a look over on this side. All right, well, is, and we're over here now. We'll get to this in a second. 4 divided by 5, 4 divided by 5, okay, it's 0.8. So I have 2 plus 0.8. Well, I have 2 plus 0.8 makes 2.8. Now, if you're not sure how, think of 0.8 if it helps you. We can do this. 0.8 is 80, 0.80. Now, why do you say, why do I care about 0.80? Think of 80 cents. All right, money, 80 cents and $2. How much is it together? All right, $2 and 80 cents. Blot out. Now, the other way is a little more complicated. There is a purpose to it, and we'll get to it. What you can do is, okay, I have two dollars and I have four fifths. Four fifths. Now let's say, and this is confusing for some, 
I can turn these two dollars into these different fifths. Now fifths are kind of hard, so let's just think of tokens, okay? Imagine you're at an arcade and you have five tokens for a dollar. Now you have four tokens already. That's the four fifths, is these four tokens, okay? Then you can trade in your dollars for five more. Since you have two dollars, you get two sets of five. So you get five, five, and your four already. So how many tokens do you have? I hope you know that five plus five plus four is 14. Here's where it gets a little tricky, though. So you take 2 times the 5, okay, 2 times 5, and that makes 10, because remember, 2 sets of 5, because you're changing a dollar for 5 tokens, a dollar for 5 tokens, okay, that's 10, plus the 4 you already got, which is going to make 14. The only tricky part is it's 14, but it's still over 5, and all that means is, yeah, I got 14 tokens, and it's still going to be 5 tokens for a dollar. So 14 over 5 or 14 divided by 5, calculate or do long division, and you'll also get 2.8. Yes, this is much easier. No argument there. There is a purpose for both, and I would not show you both if there wasn't. We will mostly use this because, hey, we're going to use a thing called the KISS rule. Keep it simple. I'm a big proponent of keeping things simple. As long as you understand it and you're good with it, I'm good with it. We will use both, though. Okay, so try to turn it into a decimal. I'm assuming you're going to do the first way, but feel free to do the second. Go ahead and pause it this time. Let's see how you did. 3 divided by 7 is 0.42. Now, you can round at this point. I don't care if you have 6.4, 6.43. Since I did not tell you what to round it to, I will accept almost any of your different outcomes. That's the thing about me. If I don't tell you what I'm looking for, and as long as you still have the right answer, I'm going to go with it. However, if you want to be specific for the Uber individual who happens to know this, and you have a calculator that can do this, it actually does repeat. It's hard to believe, but it repeats every seventh number. So it's 6.428571, then 428571. On your calculator, it probably says 4285714. One four three because it probably cuts off and your calculator can only go to a certain spot then it just rounds for you as a convenience but this is the actual but I don't care if you have 6.4 6.43 etc okay I'm trying to keep a look at the time too so I'm at 12 minutes 40 seconds I'm gonna try to keep it close to 15 as possible so go ahead and do a you try real quick let's see how you did okay seven eighths hopefully you were able to put 0.875 slap it next to the 16 it's easy. Skills practice. Go ahead and try these four at the, no, oh, these four. Go ahead and pause at this time. Round to the nearest hundred. That's two digits. Go ahead and pause at this time. Let's see how you did. Two over eight is 0.25. One over three is 0.33. Eleven over 17 is 0.65. And 12 over 36 is 0.33. I think I got just enough time to squeeze one more thing in. This is no different. I want you to ignore the negative two for now. Don't worry about it. Just go ahead and give me three divided by five. So three divided by five. Hopefully you calculate 0.6. Not a big deal. Slap the negative two in front of it. And so it's negative 2.6. Okay. So now I want you to turn this into a decimal. Go ahead and pause this time. Let's see how you did. 45 over 99 is 0.45 repeating. 0.45454545. Now if you put negative 19.5, cool. Negative 19.445. Why 45? Because if you put a 4 after, it would cut it off. Nope, can't do that. So okay. So either way, if you had negative 19.45 repeating, negative 19.5, negative 19.45, and you cut it off, I'll take it. Last thing before we end this segment to go to the next one is skills practice. Go ahead and turn these into decimals at this time. Don't say what, so it's up to you to determine. Go ahead, take a look at all four, pause. Let's see how you did. 12 over 15 is negative 12.8, negative 129 and 15 over 165 is 0.09 repeating. Again, if you have 0.1 or 0.09, that's fine. 
Uh, this becomes negative 5.25 and negative 4.1. Time is about up. Thanks again. We'll continue next segment later.